Puerto Rico is still reeling more than three weeks after Hurricane Maria ravaged the island. Clean drinking water and food are scarce, and a significant portion of the island is still without electricity. Thursday morning, President Trump sent a series of tweets that are getting some backlash. He said, in part, electric and all infrastructure was disaster before hurricanes. Congress to decide how much to spend. We cannot keep FEMA, the military, and the first responders who have been amazing under the most difficult circumstances in Puerto Rico forever. Our David Begno has more from San Juan. At the Canovanus Medical Center, the power had just gone out again. Patients were waiting by candlelight for medical attention. This is Dr. Carlos Mayado. He's seeing patients. When we walked in, the lights were on, but they, did you guys run out of diesel? Yeah, yeah, I have a, we have a diesel. You got to refill it. Yeah, we got to refill it. Outside, hospital employees were trying to refuel the generator that was provided by FEMA. They had an extra barrel of diesel that they were siphoning. The doctor jumped in to help. <laughs> After spilling diesel on himself, the doctor washed his hands and took us to the ER. He pointed to the pharmacy, which is run by Yolanda Guzman. Hola. Her team is dispensing medication for free and worrying about the billing later. That alarm is an endless reminder that 84% of the island is still without power. I think that my frustration is the response uh, to the federal government. But President Trump is already threatening to limit federal help. Even as residents struggle to find clean water amid fears that flood water is spreading disease. 61-year-old Jorge Sanyet Morales is believed to have died from leptospirosis. It's a bacterial infection spread by contaminated water. It should have been easily treatable with antibiotics. Today, in the mountains above Canovanus, it looked as if the entire village came out to lay him to rest. That gentleman is one of four people believed to have died from leptospirosis. Regarding the president's tweet that FEMA may not be able to stay here forever, based on our reporting, no one is asking for forever. They're just asking for more help right now. Steve. David, what more can you tell us about what you saw at that hospital on Thursday? First of all, it was shocking to walk in 22 days after Maria made landfall and find a doctor in between patients trying to put diesel into a generator. There were people inside who had ailments from high blood pressure to high blood sugar and other people who needed to see the doctor. No one looked critically ill. They were all sitting around candlelight using their iPhone light to sort of light the way. Uh, they seemed pleasant, uh, pleased with the service that they were getting. The doctors, though, are impatient. Can't use the x-ray room because they don't have enough power coming from the generator to power the x-ray machine. Not to mention they don't have the Wi-Fi to transmit the patient data. Talk to the pharmacist who was running the pharmacy who said, I'm running low on high blood pressure medication, insulin, and other things that deal with chronic illness. She had three young women in there filling prescriptions with flashlights. It was something you might see in a third world, in a place that people love to remind you is a part of America. We heard the doctor in your piece criticize the federal government's response. Can you describe the conditions that people are dealing with there? Uh, hard time finding water, hard time finding food, easier time finding fuel. But how many times do we have to say, and for how many days, people on this island are desperate to find clean drinking water. And where there is clean drinking water, people are running out. They're running out of bottled water. Hospitals are running out of fuel. People are running out of food. All we hear is that things are going the best that they can Given the circumstances, the governor is pleased with what the federal government is doing. The president is commending the people who are here on the ground, but the people who live here are not pleased. They're restless, they want more, and they have been waiting for nearly three weeks. David, you attended a burial on Thursday. Take us through that. What was that experience with so many people in attendance? It was almost like a parade. The body was brought on the back of a flatbed truck. There were police sirens and crowds of people who lined up with video cameras to record. Uh, some people had smiles, sort of using it as a celebration of life. Uh, the victim's family was devastated. But it was as if the whole village turned out to be there. I mean, this man, after all, has become the face of what is a growing fear. And that growing fear is that the contaminated water on this island is going to start causing massive uh, potential health crisis 
regarding the spread of disease. And this particular man, his family believes, had a cut on his finger. Contaminated water got inside. He went to the hospital. He was misdiagnosed with dengue, sent home, and returned to the hospital. When he went back into the hospital, he died that day. Come to find out, the family says doctors told him it was leptospidosis. It is a severe bacterial disease, but it's easily treatable with antibiotics. As, one, as the epidemiologist here on the island told me, no one should be dying from this. We can treat this, but you've got people walking in streams where there's contaminated water, bathing in it, and sadly drinking from it too. David Begno, appreciate it. Thank you. You bet.